I know it's crazy. I'm 35 years old and the, even crazier that my two brothers still live here with us. Like that is like not normal for a lot of people that I tell. They're like, what's wrong with you? But I think it's because my grandma, we took care of my grandma till she died. Um, you know, and it was probably the worst day of my life when she died in 2006. She died a few weeks before her birthday. She actually passed on my brother's 21st birthday. You know, probably the worst thing that could have ever happened. I thought there's no way we could survive without her, but we did, we did. She did work, uh, then she got married, and then the whole thing happened with her husband, and um, she kind of lost it from there. Things went kind of south for my mom from there. So after that, it was kind of me and my sister doing everything. She had surgery, and the day she got out, she had a heart attack going up the stairs into my nana's house and died right on the scene. And what, what year was that? This was 2012. 2012. And your, your nana took care of you? Yeah, and then my grandma took in the kids, my younger sisters and my brother. And then she passed away last year and uh, my brother moved in with me ever since. Yeah, I mean, I was raised, it's no secret. I have nothing that I'm ashamed of and nor am I embarrassed that the way I grew up because I, am a, I, I know I'm a strong woman and I'm all about my family. It's all about my family. Growing up, it was my grandmother raising myself and my three younger brothers and I had to pick up a lot of slack. I did a lot of the cleaning, I did a lot of the cooking. To this day, I still do it for them, you know, because that's just, I'm used to doing that for my brothers. Um, but we went without, you know, living off the government every month um, to make ends meet. My grandma just did what she could for us, but my both my parents, it, my, the grandma's house is my dad's house, my dad's mom, you know, and unfortunately my dad still makes bad choices and, I mean, I'm part of my dad's life. I love him to death, but that's his life. I can't change him. You know, my mom passed away of a drug overdose and that's just what happened with her a couple, few years ago. And so my whole life has just been revolved. My grandma taking care of us and I took care of her till she died in her deathbed and made all the decisions for her. Um, you, you know, leave yeah, she got really, really sick in, uh, when I was a junior in school and um, basically needed 24 hour attention. So they were gonna put her in a rest home, that was the plan. Um, but my grandma had talked to me a little before and was like, I just, I have my own house. Why am I gonna go to a, a nursing home? I, I can, I'm gonna go to my own house. And after talking to her, I just said, you know what? I, I love school. I used to, I loved school. I was involved in sports. I was always a good student. And I just said, you know what? My grandma stopped her life to raise my brothers and I. And taking on three kids, that's, it's a lot. I said, she did it all by herself. I said, there's no way that I'm gonna let her go to a nursing home. I just went and um, I was already emancipated because both my parents you know, weren't really around and it was my grandmother, so I already had that right. I went in there and I um, withdrew myself from school, went home and just told my grandma, I'm gonna take care of you. That's it, I'm gonna do everything. And that's what I did, round clock for her. And you know, we did, my brothers, all of us, we all took care of her here. And I mean, don't get me wrong, some days it was like the hardest thing to wake up and, at all times and stop your life and take care of your grandma. But I, I would do it again in a heartbeat. And it doesn't matter, families first, that's what she taught me, take care of your family. It doesn't matter, you need to take care of your family. So I did that for her. Compared to now, very quiet, very peaceful. You see everybody playing in the parks. Um, Growing up for a while, I was not like that. No one was in the parks and just the basketball court, if that. Um, but it was very violent around here. Uh, and so I kind of just kept my own route. Yeah, people would walk around with bats, golf clubs, two by fours, um, asking you who you are, where you're from, where you're going, who do you know. And, uh, I just, was more, uh, I could do it on my own. I don't, I wasn't, I didn't have much fear in me. So 
was very aware of everything. Um, learned everything on my own, so. I feel the reason why it's changed is um, more families. Um, a lot of people that were like my age or a little bit older, they have their own families now. Um, they started seeing what they kind of want their kids. Um, and so a lot of like the gangs, the violence, everything kind of toned down and it became a very more family, family united type of neighborhood. I don't know if it's people that were, I sometimes see people that I know that are now homeless and obviously it sucks to see them that way, but they made those choices. I can't, it takes a lot for me to feel bad for somebody. I've had a really crazy life. So for me to sit here and say, I feel bad for this person because of drugs and what their parents did. I don't really, I don't buy into it because I come from a parents who were addicts and are addicts. And that doesn't, I never went into that direction and made those bad choices. I said, hell no, I'm going to change. And I'm going to, there's no way that I'll go down that path. Same thing for my brother. So I don't feel bad. It takes a lot for me to feel bad. So when I see these people that I know that are homeless on the street in my neighborhood, it just is disappointing, you know, but I think some of them are people that have been lived in the neighborhood or maybe this used to be the neighborhood where people could get drugs easy. So a lot of them just come back here. And that's what, it, that's what I think it is. I think there was a fire, I think there was a fire uh, uh, at one time that really excited a lot of people there and, and, and just scared them, you know, there was a big fire and I don't quite remember, that's what I heard from the old folk there, but I do remember the time when uh, there was an explosion that killed a lot of the a lot of the neighborhood woman, mm -hmm. and it was uh, it was a, a cleaners. It was a, by cleaners. I'm talking about uh, it was a, like a laundry type place, and it used to call Supreme Cleaners, and it was located up on the uh, on Grant and Stone up in that area, and uh, it was a gas leak, and uh, somebody turned on the, the light switch. And it sparked, mm -hmm. and the whole thing was went up. Mm -hmm. And there were about uh, well, a lot of people died, but from the barrio, I would say there were about a good uh, uh, eight to twelve people who passed away. Young, young people, mothers, others that weren't married. There were students. And so it was, it was a dramatic experience. When I was a little girl, I remember when they started telling us about the World War. I was playing jacks behind my daddy's shop. And it was a terrible thing because we had two uncles that were Japanese. And They took some of my kin folks to the concentration camps just because they were one quarter Japanese American citizens born in the United States. They went into their houses, confiscated their guns, hunting guns, whatever they had that could be used but that's what happened during the war.